Well, the FSR 2.0 game support list just doubled yesterday from one to two. And honestly, that's my main problem with FSR 2.0 right now is just that it needs to get into a lot more games. Also, as it gets into more games, we do want to see this uh, compared against DLSS and just in general, uh, just how does it look? Is it good? Because in, D in Deathloop, it did seem to be a very worthy competitor to DLSS, but as we've seen with DLSS, some games offer better implementations than others. Some have more ghosting, more aliasing, some offer better performance boosts. Like I've noticed in Red Dead Redemption 2, I don't tend to get that big of a performance boost off of DLSS. But the point, so the point is here, it's really good to see this being added to more games, even if it's Farming Simulator 22. Honestly, I haven't played this game and it looks like it has very positive reviews on Steam. So maybe it's quite good, but I spent some time driving around a real tractor in my youth doing hay, and I have no, <laughs> no desire to spend my free time virtually simulating that experience. Um, but anyway, I'm hoping this is a sign that we will continue to see uh, more FSR 2.0 games supported soon. Now, I haven't had a chance to download and test this out for myself, and honestly, I'm not sure if I will in a timely manner, uh, because it's the end of the school year. I'm a math teacher. I've got to write finals and grade a bunch of late papers students are finally turning in and all of that. I did check this morning to see if anybody had a review or side-by-side -side of this out, and I couldn't find one in my limited Google and YouTube searching, but maybe by the time you're watching my video, there'll be something out there you can take a look at. Now, also, following up on the uh, Ryzen 7000 series processor announcement, we had the 5.5 gigahertz demo, but people were raising a lot of questions. It was unclear whether this was running on a single core at 5.5, were all cores boosting to 5.5, was this overclocked, were they using PBO, or was this using some amazing uh, liquid nitrogen cooler, right? Because, you know, you could do all sorts of funny things like that in an announcement. Well, AMD's Robert Halleck and Frank Azor were interviewed by PC World in their Full Nerd interview, and they answered these questions. So what we ended up with here is the exact specifications that they were running uh, that demo under. This was done using the same AMD reference motherboard, 280 millimeter AIO cooler, 16 core prototype in, uh, sample um, Ryzen 7000 chip. I guess I can't call it a 7950X officially, although it's the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 7000. So it's probably going to be called the 7950X. Anyway, <laughs> um, and they said this was plugged in, no overclock, natural frequency of that CPU. They also confirmed that most threads will go to around 5.5, but it depends on the scene and the game, and that 5.2 to 5.5 gigahertz on all threads was common on the game. So, in general, it does not seem, at least based on those responses, that this was any kind of trickery or anything. 5.5 gigahertz does seem to make sense. Um, although, of course, then this does go back into all of these, uh, is AMD misleading or sandbagging with their performance numbers? Because when they say they're only getting about 15% better single core performance, but if their chips are clocking this much higher, does that mean that we really didn't get much IPC gain at all? Is it just from the clock speed boost? I mean, anyway, there's a lot of things still to answer about this, but it is nice to see hitting those speeds without an overclock and just get plug in your CPU, you should be getting that. Um, now again, this is an early engineering sample from back in April, so will we be, be, will we be seeing even better performance uh, when we get the full versions of these out in the future? Now, a few other interesting things today. Apparently VR backpacks are a thing. I had never bothered to like, uh, <laughs> well, I hadn't seen these before. Apparently this is version 4.0 of Zotac's uh, VR Go backpack, but this is the first I've heard of them. So uh, I just thought I'd report on this. I think it's an interesting idea. This uh, VR backpack has uh, a Core i7, 
Um, it has an RTX A4500, which I believe is something like an RTX 3060 level of performance, although that's not the type of GPU I'm super, super familiar with off the top of my head. Um, now, my big question when looking at something like this is what kind of battery life do you get out of this thing? Well, up to 50 minutes, so less than an hour. And if it's in their marketing that it's up to 50, <laughs> I think that's the big question. So, because if you're going to go to all the trouble of putting this into a backpack, um, like to make it wireless and you just get your headset going on there and everything, uh, I, I guess, you know, being plugged into the wall to power it up would be, you know, uh, a bit of a downside, but I guess you could at least get some short gaming experiences on this thing. Uh, it seems pretty interesting. Here's some more of these specs. It does come with a lot of uh, I.O. and uh, anyway, it's it's two 6,000 uh, milliamp hour lithium ion batteries with an AC adapter rated at 330 watts. Anyway, I think that's interesting, but I shouldn't keep rambling on about it. A few more product announcements. Uh, very recently, we saw Visa announcing their adaptive sync display, um, you know, certification. Well, we're now getting the first monitor. Uh, certified with it. We're getting uh, some monitors from LG certified to be Visa Adaptive Sync displays. So yay. Now along with this, I also noticed that LG is offering a 4K OLED gaming monitor now. Now a lot of people, myself included, use LG 4K OLED TVs, especially their C1 and now going into the C2 lineup, um, as gaming monitors for, uh, for for gaming PCs. But it looks like they're actually doing one. By the way, I think that's a picture of one of the other ones. That looks too small to be this one. Uh, but anyway, this was in a bigger article with more of the monitors. Uh, but the point is, it looks like they are launching a OLED gaming monitor, the 48GQ900. And uh, this is 48 inch. So for those of you hoping it would be the 42 inch model like the C2 uh, offers, that's too bad. Um, and this is 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, which should be able to OC to 138 hertz, it looks like. But in general, this sounds a lot like the TVs, <laughs> you know? Um, so I'm wondering if it's gonna have more of the, you know, PC features with, you know, USB and, and such. So I'd like to look more into this in the future. That could be an interesting option, but I think it's too bad that it's sticking with the 48 inch side because if you're already getting the 48 inch one, why aren't you just buying the TV? Like I did, and I love the TV, honest. Anyway, I, I don't need to go on and on about that. Um, now, this was an interesting article. Now, this is, this is just research that's obviously not going to uh, affect our gaming anytime soon. But apparently there's research being done into using quantum computing to boost ray tracing performance. Now, I don't wanna to dive too far into the weeds on this, uh, but basically there was a white paper article published uh, using reference classical rendering versus a non-optimized quantum rendering and an optimized quantum rendering on, a, I think it was a 128 by 128 uh, grid uh, ray traced scene. And they were able to get it down from the reference classical rendering using uh, 2,678 K intersections, uh, evaluated for 41,842 rays, which is 64 per ray, and the optimized quantum renderings went all the way down to 896 K intersections, evaluations, uh, 22, which is 22.1 per ray. Seems like some big savings, but quantum computing is not gonna be sitting in your graphics card anytime soon, so I'm not gonna dwell on it. Uh, last couple quick things, how about um, some system requirements. I haven't done a system requirements video in a long time because honestly there hasn't been a game that I thought was a big enough deal to really warrant it or had interesting enough system requirements, but I will mention that the Cori PC system requirements have been revealed. And basically the minimums look pretty low, pretty reasonable here uh, with just eight gigabytes of RAM and AMD FX 8350 Intel i5 3570, a GTX 780 RX 470. So basically to actually just, can you run the game? Uh, pretty reasonable and to run it well, also pretty reasonable, but definitely stepping it up quite a bit. Jumping up to an RTX 2060 or an RX 5700, 16 gigabytes of RAM and much more modern CPUs. <laughs> These CPUs, a 10900K jumping up from a 3570. I would say you'd, you'd probably be fine somewhere in between there. And this game is uh, launching on June 10th. 
if you are interested. Now, they're not giving us any kind of performance targets, resolution, or anything for any of this, which is one reason why I wouldn't bother to make a full video about it. And last thing I wanna mention real quick is PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 emulation is starting to get off the ground, although you're not gonna be running uh, any actual commercial games here very well anytime soon, but it's just interesting to see this uh, kind of getting started, which I'll leave, it with, uh, leave us with that at the end of the video today, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.